योग कर्मसु कौशल Namaskar I am Dr Jagdish Joshi professor and director of UGC Human Resource Development Center of Gujarat University Ahmedabad I am very happy to welcome you to the first of its kind annual refresher program in English language teaching Today the module we are going to discuss is about an interesting topic I don't want to tell you exactly what we are going to discuss it now at present but yes you will come to know that what it is Though global changes have been impacted all avenues of English language learning because of global need of human power with English competence learners accessibility of right exposure to word learning L2 that is language 2 in the most natural way is a remote possibility a sustained approach to carry out educational schemes like scope still calls for student oriented approaches one of the areas that indian students struggle in learning l2 that is the other language is acquisition in phonetics friends you know that many a time it becomes difficult for our students maybe sometimes it is difficult for us also to pronounce several words so pronunciation of language pronunciation of english language the words of english language creates lot of problems many a time and we come here we are coming today with a module which will discuss about the pronunciations of language how to pronounce phonetics the science of pronunciation we are going to focus on today due to the varied language and accents in india the mother tongue influences the speech of second language also when we try to speak in other language when we try to speak either in hindi or in english many words of our mother tongue many types of pronunciations of our mother tongue they pull us and that is called mother tongue pull and that is how it is difficult for us many a time to pronounce several words if you remember some english movies particularly in the movies where britishers are shown it is very difficult for britishers to pronounce the I'm talking about the sound, the talwar ka jo ta hota hai wo. So they speak it like ta, and that is what we see many a time. Even for French people, there are some words which are not very easy to pronounce, which are there in Indian languages. Like that, there are many words in English language. There are many phonemes in English language. There are many sounds in English language are not really very easy for us to pronounce. Another thing is there is a discrepancy between spelling and pronunciation. I remember the song of Kishore Kumar. when he was talking about that english is such a language where it is difficult to pronounce the words do you remember the song i don't want to tell you the song you can try to find it out he is talking about several pronunciations that if we use p u t put then we call it put and then when whenever we have b u t we don't call it but we call it but like this many similar words he has coined and he talks about them in a song that's very interesting song maybe you can try to listen to it so there are many such things in english like many a time pa is written like p and it is pronounced in a different way like psychology we don't pronounce the first word it's silent there are many such interesting things in english which we have to look at this may lead to students not being able to speak or pronounce english properly the way they should and leading to lack of intangibility when they communicate in english this is what happens to many of the students and maybe many of the scholars as well this module tries to address questions related to english vowels and how they can be taught interactively so we are going to talk on vowels and different ways different shades different styles how you can go for them how you can make it very interesting how you can make it more effective I am very happy to invite Mamta Pillai on our panel as a resource person for this online refresher course. Welcome Mamta on the board. Thank you Dr. Jagdish Joshi for having me on board for this project. Uh today we are talking about uh pronunciation the sound system of English language which basically means pronunciation of English language. So uh what I am going to talk about is this vowels and consonants in great detail. 
So we usually see that pronunciation determines clarity of expression. Very true. It makes your mask the meaning of your language. So when it comes to multicultural society that we live in and the kind of Englishes, the variety of Englishes that we speak or our students speak, it becomes imperative for us to unlearn those mother tongue uh, sound units that we have, you know, habituated uh, to speak for so long. Very so true. in order to unlearn those pronunciation, in order to unlearn those habits, it becomes imperative for the teachers as well as students to make consistent amount of practice with a lot of patience and determination in the area of pronunciation, which in elementary schools have, has already taken a back seat. The teachers themselves are not trained enough in phonetics. Very so true. where teachers are not trained, uh, uh, it boils down to students not, not being good at it. So what we are trying to do here is that uh, to go into a greater detail into the nuances of pronunciation uh, so that it uh, will help teachers of English language teaching to acquire uh, the knowledge of phonetics and then and phonology also so that uh, they are able to have the correct stress uh, you know knowledge about the stress accent patterns and intonation uh, uh, because uh, ultimately sir English is a rhythmic language very true so uh, in order to uh, follow that rhythm and in order to achieve that uh, fluency or the competence it becomes imperative that pronunciation the knowledge of pronunciation is a must so this particular module will focus on uh, teaching of pronunciation uh, with great uh, amount of focus on vowels and consonant sounds yes friends i guess this will be very useful to all of you to have a look at different patterns of pronunciation we all studied or we are practicing this but i guess this module will be very helpful to us to enrich our students pronunciation welcome to the online refresher course by mhrd ugc for english language teaching in this module on phonetics, sound system of English language, we shall cover vowel sounds. Through this module, we would like to achieve the following outcomes. To describe the structure of the speech organs and their function in varying the speech signal, including the voice and be aware of the basic methods of articulation. To describe the division of vowels and know the signs and definitions of the most important vowels and prosotic phenomena. To utilize phonetic dictionary symbols to continue to improve pronunciation. To distinguish and properly enunciate voiced and voiceless sounds with increasing intelligibility. To be able to produce native like intonation, rhythm and stress in sentences. Introduction Language has a very important social purpose because it is mainly used for linguistic communication. A language can be used in two ways for the purpose of communication. This module tries to address questions related to English vowels and how they can be taught interactively. It can be spoken or written. Linguistic is a systematic study of language. Now, phonetics is a branch of linguistics and it is the branch dealing with the medium of speech. It deals with the production, transmission and reception of the sounds of human speech. Speech sounds are very broadly divided into two categories, namely the vowels and consonants. There are 20 vowel sounds and 24 consonant sounds. Vowels are further divided into another two categories that are monophthongs, which are also called pure vowels, and diphthongs, which are also called vowel glides. Now, discussing vowels further. A vowel is the opposite of a consonant. A sound made with no obstruction in the vocal tract to the air as it passes through it. Say a long ah, the sound doctors ask us to make when they want to look into our mouths and feel how the air flows out through your mouth without any obstruction. Try the same for e in as in the word like tree or o in saw. You will notice that the lips and the tongue take different positions for these different vowels. But in each case, there is no obstruction or blockage of the kind that we find in consonant sounds. Talking about the division of vowel sounds. 20 vowel sounds are further divided into following two categories. 
first we shall discuss monophthongs or the pure vowels and then diphthongs or the vowel glides. Monophthongs are 12 in number and they are called front vowels which are e, e, e and a. For example, in words like lid, lead, said and sad. Then we have central vowels which are three in number, a, a and a in the words like alert, shut and shirt. Then you have back vowels that is o, u, o, o and a in words like full, fool, caught, caught and calm. Now we shall discuss articulation of vowel sounds. A vowel is described taking into account the following criteria as shown in the vowel diagram of IPA. The part of the tongue raised during its articulation are described as the front, the central and the back of the tongue. The height to which it is raised are defined as close, half close, half open and open. The position of the lips are described as unrounded and rounded. In order to understand the system behind the diagram, the first step is to explore the limits and the range of tongue positions used to make vowels known as the vowel space. There are two fixed articulatory reference points to the system. To find the first, you make a vowel with the front of the body of your tongue pushed as far forward and as far up towards the hard palate as possible. This is the position for E vowel as shown in figure 1.1. If you move your tongue any further forward or up, audible friction would result between the tongue and the hard palate and the sound would no longer be a vowel sound. The second reference point is found by doing the opposite. Opening your mouth and pulling your tongue as far down and back as possible without causing any friction between the root of the tongue and the back wall of the pharynx. As shown in figure, this is your O vowel. The further position can be identified by pushing the tongue as far up and back as possible as shown in figure which gives us the O vowel and by pushing the tongue as far forward and down as possible as shown in figure which gives us the A vowel. Note that during the production of these vowels, the tongue tip and blade as shown in figure remain low in the mouth. They aren't involved in vowel production and this is why the front of the tongue as the technical term isn't where the non phoneticians usually expect it to be. The front of the tongue is actually the front of the part used in vowel articulations and is what a layman would think as of the center or middle of the tongue. Now spend some time exploring the limits of the vowel space. Paradoxical as it may seem, it is best to do this silently. If you voice the vowels as you articulate them, it makes you less able to appreciate the sensations of touch, movement and position you receive from your articulators. Start at the E position, then silently and slowly glide to the O position. E, U. Position while keeping your mouth as close as possible to the palate without turning the sound into a consonant sound. Next, slowly glide to O position while making sure to pull your tongue back to the lower back limit of the vowel space. Do the same from the E position to R position and then to O position, moving your tongue along the front limit of the vowel space. 
you will feel that your tongue is moving in an oval shape like that is shown in figure. The oval is too awkward a shape for practical purposes. So, in a schematic representation, its sides are straightened. To give the basic shape of a vowel quadrilateral as shown in figure and that we are familiar with from the IPA chart. The shape isn't a perfect square which reflects the fact that there is greater distance between E and U than between A and O and also more space between E and A than between U and O. The vowel diagram is further elaborated on by providing symbols for four further positions equally spaced on the left that is e and a uh, and right sides o and o. Finally, lines are added to divide the vowel space into manageable vertical and horizontal areas as shown in figure. Vertically, the positions are called close, mid and open with mid being further divided into close mid and open mid and horizontally they are front, central and back. Now we shall discuss the position of the lips. So far we have only considered the position of the tongue but the shape of the lips is also very important. Since the tongue and the lips can move independently of each other, every vowel position can be accompanied by either unrounded or rounded lips. This is why the symbols on the IPA vowel diagram mostly come in pairs. The left symbol having unrounded lips and the right symbol having the rounded lips. The basic vowel description can be summarized in terms of three factors. Vertical tongue position, horizontal tongue position and the lip shape. The peripheral vowels for example also called cardinal vowels are described and shown in figure. 